we're going to move on to Group B. Senegal finished at the top, but only with five points after they tied against Malawi in a nil-nil draw. Now, despite that rather uninspiring result, fans on both sides still came away satisfied. Take a listen. Even if we don't qualify, I think Malawi has done itself proud because this is the first time that Malawi is being spoken about to say that they are going to qualify to the next round, which has never happened before. And secondly, this is one of the youngest team here at the um, African Cup of Nations. Malawi is here to stay, maybe even to go home with it, because it's going to come home in Malawi. On cherche à être premier. Nous sommes premiers. On est sommes très fiers de notre équipe. Nous sommes très optimistes. Allez, Sénégal. Allez, Sénégal. Sakanam, Sakanam, Sénégal. All right, lots of excited fans. We're going to cross uh, over to James, who was at that game. Now, James, the Senegal were runners up at the last AFCON tournament. This isn't really the result that they were hoping for, but it does get the job done, does, doesn't it? It really does, it really does, Alison. Uh, but look, once again, another uh, goalless draw. Was this what Senegal wanted? Well, clearly, uh, it's not the best start for them. Uh, when you look at things, I mean, they sit top of Group B with five points. But consider this, that they've only won one game. Uh, that was their opening game. And they've only scored one goal off that last-minute penalty. So apart from that, two draws, which really, isn't, well, it's really is quite surprising when you consider, as you say there, uh, what they came in from runners-up last time round. And one of the favourites to win uh, this uh, Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, now, as we've seen, of course, over the last few days, it isn't because you're the favourite that you're necessarily going to go far or that you are going to succeed uh, in the way that might be expected of this. Um, Algeria has had a terrible start uh, to to the to the tournament, and everything is still uh, up in the air for them. Uh, and again, for for Senegal, this is very similar. Um, the, the last time round, they blamed the difficult play on the, on one side uh, to the fact that they were playing uh, right at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, when it was scorching hot in Cameroon uh, and that that was difficult for their players. Well, today they were playing at 5 p.m. So we didn't see that difference there. And once again, it was unorganized. We didn't really see much, uh, much, much really happen. No building on the field. Uh, and another part that they said was really hindering uh, their progress there was that they had an outbreak of COVID-19 uh, ahead of the tournament uh, and the players are now uh, available once again Edward Mendy uh, in the goal and Palace Mendy uh, these are all uh, they've, they've now got a full squad uh, but yet they haven't been able to capitalize on it so really it's it's quite a it's it's quite a difficult situation for them to be with especially after the criticism that they've had however uh, after the game when we spoke to Edward Mendy he made a very interesting point uh, and I suggest that you take a listen to it we have five points. We haven't let in a goal. We're first. We have a lot of reasons to be positive. We had 10 players who got COVID, so we're not at our usual level of health. You know I've been playing for Senegal for 10 years. And whether it's qualification games or group games, we've always done well. But this year it's not the same. We know that it's not easy, but I ask for your patience. We are all aware of the situation, and we don't like it either. We would prefer to win 3 or 4 0, but it wasn't to be. There you go, the star of the nation, Sadio Mane, who's yet to really put on the performance that he wants and that fans want too. Uh, Edward Menzi, who was uh, just uh, awarded the FIFA's Best Goalkeeper uh, Award just yesterday. Now, there is some uh, positive news, let's say, uh, for Adio Cici's side, uh, which is the fact that now that he has all his players available for them and that they go freshly into this round of 16, perhaps we'll able to see a much stronger and much more confident side anyway. All right, James, let's talk about well, Malawi next, because they're not sure to move on to the next round, but even the possibility that they could make it to that knockout stage does seem like a pretty big deal for them. 
it would be a very big deal. Um, as you say there, they could make it through because they're third tied on four points uh, with Guinea. But as uh, Simon just explained earlier on, uh, only four of the three best players, only four of the uh, best placed uh, third teams in these group standings will make it through. Uh, and the competition is very fierce. Many of them are already on four or three points. So for now, they're still going to have to wait to see how things pan out uh, during the week. But uh, I can tell you that we did see an impressive side on the pitch today. Uh, you can see that they were really trying to give it their all. They were not there in this comfortable situation that, uh, that Senegal seemed to appear in. Uh, and they were really fighting for it, really pushing. Uh, one man in particular, uh, Gabadinho, their striker, uh, number 11, uh, was spectacular. He didn't quite manage to get that ball in the net and sometimes uh, just kind of got his uh, legs in the way and just not really finding uh, that sort of deciding goal. Uh, but all in all, uh, it was a strong team and let's see if they can go forwards. Fans, have you heard, uh, are enthusiastic about it. The players uh, believe that they can do more. Uh, but of course, for now, they're still going to have to wait to see how things go. And if things do go their way, then they would, for the first time ever, make it through to that knockout stage in round of 16. All right, we will be watching out for what happens to Malawi. Uh, James, thank you very much.